Thank you, Antone and Mary. Welcome to First United Methodist Church Richardson. I'm Clayton Oliphant, pastor of the church. We're so glad to have you here with us this day. It truly is a, a blessed day to come together and worship the Lord. And we're so glad that you've chosen to be with us. If you're watching us by live stream or by Facebook or YouTube, however you've chosen to be with us today, we welcome you. There's a place that you'll see to check in. We hope that you'll do that and uh, let us know that you're worshiping with us this day. We want to, um, again, tell you what a joy it is that we have this medium that, through which we can come together and worship the Lord when we can't be together physically, that we are brought together as the church. We're still together as the church, and we're so glad that, that um, we have this way that we can do this. This week has been a very special week at our church. We've had our first ever virtual vacation Bible camp. And today, as a part of our service, you'll see a celebration video that uh, describes that, that vacation Bible camp experience. And it's truly been a blessing for everyone who's participated. Again, we're continuing our series into the unknown today. We're so glad that you've chosen to be with us. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. community of faith. As we come together for our time of prayer, you can find joy and concerns on the bulletin and the prayer list on the live stream page. Will you join us now as we go to God in prayer? God of strength, on this day of holy worship, we praise you for your constant presence and your mighty works in our lives. We gather together from all over your kingdom to celebrate your love, to find hope in your word, and to sing your praises. We pray for all of your people. We pray for those who feel sad or alone. 
We pray for those who are struggling to feel your presence. We pray for those who are wondering what now as they look at the world and see brokenness and pain. We pray for those who are convicted in your spirit to do something to serve your kingdom here on earth. We pray for those who are preaching and teaching us what it means to serve your people and to be faithful Christians. We give thanks to you for a church who teaches its children about truth, justice, peace, faith, and salvation. May the lessons we all learn become who we are and how we act. Make your presence known to each and every one of us. Stir within us action to be witnesses of your power, strength, grace, and truth. Shine your light into our lives so that we may do your work and love your people. And now let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Ministries like Vacation Bible Camp and others continue to help our community even while we spread out across God's kingdom. We invite you to continue to be faithful by giving online or through texting to give so that all people of God know they don't have to be alone.
Welcome to Children's Time, everyone. I'm Cheryl Bishop, Director of Worship and Children's Ministries, and we have had an amazing week of Vacation Bible Camp. I know that so many of you spread out all through our kingdom have been learning about truth and peace and justice and faith and salvation in ways that you never thought you would have learned them before. You've learned them at home with your families and some of your siblings and maybe your friends. And so I know that this whole week has been a blast. It's been so great to see all that you have done this week and you have raised so much money for Stove Builders of Guatemala, I know that at this point we already have six stoves built. So as we go forward throughout the rest of today and this week, I hope that you will remember, remember all that you have learned and that you continue to celebrate as we watch this video that shows we are the people of God. Say that we have been set free and tell us we're creating you. You say our home is not this place, but our home's in you. You say that we are salt and light. children call to spread your love to bring your kingdom down to earth and grace from above let's bring your kingdom here to earth and grace from above Be on. 
stand and lift our voice, proclaim a love unending, and with one heart rejoice, our faith will not be shaken. Welcome again to my patio. Today we have the privilege of continuing to hear the story of the early church, and particularly how the Holy Spirit moved the church and added to its numbers. Our text is from the second chapter of Acts, beginning with chapter 37. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home, ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our scripture today takes place on Pentecost Sunday. Two weeks ago, we celebrated Pentecost. And today we pick back up with this scripture of the aftermath of the Holy Spirit coming upon the church. And we do so on a month in a month that we celebrate our birth as a church. 134 years ago, 1886, First United Methodist Church of Richardson uh, came into being. 15 charter members um, came together to, um, to, to better their community, to have a place, a home where they could spiritually uh, connect with each other and with God. And they wanted a better life. They wanted a better way of life for themselves and for their families and for their community. And throughout the history of our church, that's been, that's been the story. And I love um, history. I love studying history of churches. I've done some church consulting, and it's always interesting to see the DNA and do a uh, deep dive into the DNA of a church and to, to try to figure out who is this church and what is this church all about. And for our church, for First United Methodist Church Richardson, there's been this ever moving spirit, this, this spirit uh, of, of reaching out to the community, a spirit of, of blessing the community, a spirit of, of including more people and welcoming more people. One of the stories I love to tell that so many of you have heard me tell before about the, this church that I think captures something of the DNA, something of the essence of this church, this church's spirit, what happened when we were building this sanctuary and we were designing the communion rail and the architect was sitting with our building committee and we were talking about the design of the rail and it was much smaller than it is to, it, the way it turned out. But um, so we kept saying, we need it bigger. We need a bigger communion rail. We, it's a large sanctuary. We need a wider communion rail. We need it wider. And, and finally, in frustration, uh, the, the, the architect said, well, how wide do you want it? And one of our building committee members said, 
You always want it wide enough for one more. And I've always believed that that story captures the heart of who we are as a church. Our mission that, that we've said this is our mission as a church is uh, as the United Methodist Church to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And the way that we've chosen to go about that here at First Richardson is that we welcome people for Christ, we grow people in Christ, and we serve people with Christ. We've defined our core values as a church, that our core values spell out the name of Christ, compassion, humility, respect, inclusion, servanthood, and teamwork. Those core values define something about who we are. And we always want to be the church that's wide enough for one more, that's welcoming to the one more person who would come into a, a loving relationship with God through Jesus Christ. If you look at the DNA of the Christian church, you go back to this day of Pentecost, you look back at the founding and where the church was on this day of Pentecost and the, the, the days that then came after that as the church was formed, as the church took shape. And so on that day of Pentecost, Simon Peter, you remember Simon Peter who was so uh, cowardly on that um, Friday that he denied knowing the Lord and ran away to save himself, now stands before the very people who crucified Jesus, now filled with the Holy Spirit. He, he preaches this amazing sermon where he calls people to faith in Christ. He, he tells these people, this, this Jesus whom you crucified, we believe is the Messiah, and God has raised him. And the people are cut in their hearts. They, they want to know what they need to do, and they say, what, what must we, we do to be saved? What, 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 what do we do now in response to this good news of this risen Lord and this Holy Spirit that has come upon us to fill us? What do we do now in response? And Simon Peter says to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, and come into this relationship with Jesus Christ. So it begins with repentance. It begins with turning your life around. Repent is, is a word that, that literally means to change your direction, to go a different way. And if you look at where life is headed, where you're going, one of the questions we always have to ask ourselves as Christians is, is my life headed in a Godward direction? Is my life in keeping with where God would have me be? And I think this is so important as we, as we look at this text and, and try to think about what does it mean for us to be the church today, particularly at a time when the future is uncertain and we don't know what the future holds, and we are trying to figure out how to be the church virtually when we can't gather together. What does it mean for us to be the church in the world today? I think it begins with repentance, with acknowledging our own sinfulness, acknowledging our own brokenness, acknowledging that we don't always get it right, acknowledging that that we have room for improvement and that we have to do a, a serious introspection of our lives to think about how our lives are or are not in keeping with what God would desire for us. I think this is a good time for introspection, for us to, to look at our lives and to, to think about what does it mean to turn in a Godward direction, to turn away from sin, and a lot of times we think about sin on a very personal scale and not on a systemic scale, not on a, on a, a global scale. But if we look hard into our lives, we know that sin is both personal and corporate. There, there are ways that, that we participate in sin on a systemic, in a systemic way that maybe we've not been aware of. The last couple of weeks, there have been a lot of um, conversations about racism. And I think, uh, especially for those of us who are white, 
some of those conversations are very uncomfortable. Some of us are very uncomfortable um, with the thought that we would be racist because we don't think we're racist. We don't feel like we are racist. We, we, we believe we treat everyone equally. And yet from a systemic viewpoint, we have, have to come to acknowledge, and I think our black brothers and sisters are asking us to come to acknowledge that there is racism in the world, both past and present. And I think that acknowledgement is healthy for us. I think there's something, it's, just, it's uncomfortable to acknowledge it, but there's something very powerful about acknowledging that truth. And I, I think that, you know, I think about our own family and our own family last, last week, we had about a three hour discussion with our, our family and ex, some extended family members about our own involvement in ways that we were calling each other out. And the conversation really was led by my children who, of whom I'm so proud for um, where they are and their acknowledgement. So I, I, I really, um, I, I, my prayer is that those, those kinds of conversations are going on in homes all over this country. And particularly, I would pray that in our church family, among family members, among friends, that we're having those kinds of conversations that can be very uncomfortable to acknowledge but there's power and freedom in acknowledging human sinfulness, the, particularly in, in over the last few weeks, the human sinfulness of racism. I think this is a, a time for us to, um, to boldly proclaim that message and for us to acknowledge, yes, there is racism. There's a, a freedom that comes from that because we know that if we acknowledge it, then we can work on it and we can do better. When Peter tells the people, here's what you do to follow Jesus, repent of your sins and be baptized every one of you. He's, he's calling them to move, to change their direction and, and to move in a Godward direction. I think that's a challenge for all of us. What would Jesus have us to do? How would Jesus have us live? How would, how would God call us at a time such as this to be the church of Jesus Christ? How can we best do that? Well, it begins with our acknowledgement of sinfulness and our turning toward God, our repenting of our sin. So I think, I think um, this is an important acknowledgement. And I think Simon Peter is saying, this is the way that leads to freedom. When you acknowledge sin, ask for God's forgiveness, receive the forgiveness that God alone can offer to you, and then move your life in a Godward direction. The, the next thing, the second thing about this passage that I think is so important is that um, the book of Acts then tells us, Luke is the writer of the book of Acts, and Luke is telling us what's the spiritual essence of this community? What's the DNA like in this community of faith? And I want us to take us through um, a little Bible study this morning to, to look at um, these, these words from the book of Acts. So that first day, about 3,000 people respond to Peter's invitation to repent of their sins and to be baptized and be part of this, this new movement of God's Spirit called the church the birth of the church. So um, then it tells us, then he tells us, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. What were the apostles teaching? They were teaching about the way of Jesus. They're teaching about things like the Sermon on the Mount. They're teaching about his parables. They're teaching about his life, his death, and his resurrection. They're teaching about hope. They're teaching about what it means to live as a follower of Christ, the high demands of discipleship, of what it means to follow Christ, to have to leave behind your old way and to pick up with the way of Christ. So they devoted themselves to this teaching. They're learning, they're growing. They don't have it all figured out. You know, Christians are always growing people. We're always 
learning. That's part of our mission statement as a church is that we're helping people grow in their relationship with Christ. We're growing, and that means that we're learning. We're a learning community, whether that's an online learning community or an in-person learning community. We're continuing to grow and examine our own lives in the light of the message and teachings of Jesus Christ. They devoted themselves to fellowship. Now this is the part in a virtual world that I think we're all missing so much. And and I know we can't wait to get back to where we can meet together. That's the the message I continually get from so many of you. You miss the the handshakes and the hallway hugs and, and all the different ways that you support each other in fellowship. And we're learning that we can still be in fellowship through Zoom calls and through uh, phone calls and through letters and in different ways that we're still connecting and fellowshipping with each other virtually. And this will be for a season and we'll last through this season. We don't know how long this will last, but we know we can do this together in the spirit of Christ. Uh, They devoted themselves to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. They were in fellowship. They were in communion with each other. They were a praying community. They prayed for each other. I think prayer is at the essence of who we are as a church. We're a church that's built on a foundation of prayer. When we celebrate our birthday in the month of June, I always like to uh, to remind people that This church was built on a foundation of prayer. When we laid the the foundation, we had prayer cards people wrote that are all through the foundation. Prayers that were written on the walls before it was painted, all all surrounding us in this cross-shaped building in a spirit of prayer. We're a praying community. We pray for each other. And then then, um, Luke goes on to tell us in verse 43, the sense of awe, fear, awe, came upon every soul as they saw the signs and wonders of God. God was moving in their community and they were witnesses to it. They saw God moving. They saw lives being changed. They saw people who were broken find wholeness in Christ. They saw people who who were in the depths of despair find a way of hope. They saw God's movement in in the world and they were amazed and awed by what God was doing. I I, I think this is so important for us to see that God is moving in this church. God is moving in this community. And then it says, they had all things together. They believed they were all together. They had all things in common and they sold their possessions and goods and distributed them, them to all as any had need. Now this talks about their sacrificial living that they were willing to be part of a church where they sacrificed for the good of the whole. Everyone did their part. Everyone was a part of being a part of this church and living into the, the good news of Jesus Christ through their participation in it. Everyone did their part. I love telling the story of the building of, of this campus when we built this campus. And, and it's just an example of the kind of selflessness that is exhibited in the church of Jesus Christ. That one couple in our church, who's still in our church to this day, decided they would live on one salary and donate the other salary so that this church could build this new campus. They did that for six years. And I'm always amazed by that story and surprised by it, but also at the same time, and I know that not everyone can live on those kinds of, has that kind of margin to do that, but it, 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 it typifies the kind of selfless giving, the selflessness of this church, that the mission of the church becomes more important than any personal agendas, that we all sacrifice equally together, that we all give of ourselves in the ways that we can, through our, our time, our treasure, and our talent, we all do our part for the good of the whole. So they had everything together. They, they shared. If anybody had a need, they met that need. If anyone um, had a, a prayer concern, they all prayed for that person. If anyone needed food, they got food for that person. 
And then it says, day by day, attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes, they partook of food with glad and generous hearts. There was a gladness, a generosity of spirit in this church, and they had glad and generous hearts. So this is the essence of this spiritual community. The spirit of this community is, a, is about selfless living. It's about aligning your life with the life of Jesus. And it's about then participating in the life of the church in whatever ways that you can. It's about the giving of yourself in relation to how God has blessed you so that you can be a blessing. So then lastly, um, it, it says that this is a contagious movement. So you have this, this repentant heart that turns toward God. You have the spiritual essence of this community. And then because of this spiritual essence of this community, what, what happens is this contagious spirit. And it, and it says um, they partook of, of food and with glad and generous hearts. They were praising God. Look at verse 47. They were praising God and having the favor, the goodwill of all the people. People in the community looked at these people and realized these people are a blessing to our community. These people were so remarkable in the eyesight of the community that they, they were um, filled with the Spirit of God in such a way that people in the community looked at them and thought how remarkable. They had goodwill of all the people. Wouldn't it be something to be a church where your church was such a contagious movement? There was such a, a spirit of joy, generosity, love, kindness, compassion, inclusion, that, that, that when people saw the people of this church in the community, there was something magnetic, that people were drawn to be part of a community like that. Wouldn't you want to be a part of a community like that? And it says then, the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Of course they were adding to their number. Of course they were growing because people found this generous spirit, people found this amazing, contagious spirit of Christ within them. These people who had turned their lives toward God, these people who were living selflessly uh, in their spirit, in their spiritual life, they were selflessly giving. And these people then who had goodwill with all the people, of course they were growing because they had this incredible spirit of Christ at their core. This is the kind of church I pray we can be. This is the kind of church that I think God has called us to be. A church that realizes and recognizes we haven't always gotten it right, but we wanna be better, we wanna do better, we want to be the church that God wants us to be. And so we repent, we acknowledge our own sinfulness and we turn toward God. And then we live in this kind of selfless spirit of Christ Instead of being selfish, we are selfless. We break bread together. We, we love each other virtually or, or in person. We, we find ourselves drawn into a spirit uh, of a prayerful, loving, generous, heartfelt, Christ-following community. And there's something so magnetic about that, that contagious about that movement that people are drawn to be part of it. Wouldn't you want to be a part of a church like that? Can't we be a church like that? One of my favorite writings is from Cyprian. Um, many, many, many moons ago, one of the early church fathers, and he writes to his friend Donatus, and he says these words, this seems a cheerful world, Donatus, when I view it from this fair garden under the shadow of these vines. But if I climbed some great mountain and looked over the wide lands, you know very well what I would see. Brigands on the high road, pirates on the seas, in the amphitheaters, men murdered to please the applauding crowds, under all roofs, misery and selfishness. 
It is a really bad world, Donatus, an incredibly bad world. Yet in the midst of it, I have found a quiet and holy people. They have discovered a joy which is a thousand times better than any pleasures of this sinful life. They are despised and persecuted, but they care not. They have overcome the world. These people, Donatus, are the Christians, and I am one of them. I pray that our church will be such a church that people will see the heart and spirit, the essence of who we are as Christ-following people who are striving to get it right and who have such a selflessness about our spirit that people are drawn to be part of this community. I pray it will be so. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do thank you for the gift of life, for our church, and as we celebrate this 134th year of our church's founding, we're mindful of the many, many people upon whose shoulders we stand this day. We thank you for those saints who have been before us. And Lord, we anticipate those who will come after us. And our prayer is that those who come behind us will find that we too have been faithful. That having repented of our own sin, that we have turned our lives towards you. That we have given our hearts to Jesus in such a way that our lives are selfless instead of being selfish. And I pray, Lord, that there would be such goodwill created in the community by living in this way that others may come to be a part of this church family. Lord, we always have room for at least one more, and we pray that we always will. We pray that this in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. If there's someone who's watched us today who would, is interested in becoming a part of First United Methodist Church Richardson, we would love to have you as a member of our church. Send us an email at join at fumcr.com if you have any questions about joining the church or what it means to be a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ. We'd love to, to contact with you, connect with you, and uh, find ways that you can plug in to the life of our church. Thank you for joining us for worship this day. 
We pray that it's been a good day in your life and pray that it will continue to be a good day as you continue to open yourself to the spirit of the living God. Let's go into the world. Let's be the people of God. Let's love people in the name of Christ. Let's offer ourselves as a living offering to God this day. Let's be a difference in our community. Let's be a blessing. Go in Jesus' name this day and may God's spirit be with you always.